Hi guys, this is Kalara Hudson of While They Play Designs and on today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a spit join or rather a felted join. That's a little prettier uh, name for it. And this is for when you are knitting in your work and you come across a knot in your work. This technique also works if you want to join a new ball of yarn to your working yarn. But I do wanna let you know that this technique will only work if you have a natural fiber such as wool or alpaca. Uh, basically your fiber needs to be at least, I would say 50% animal hair for this technique to work. If it's 100% acrylic, you cannot use this technique. Okay, so why don't we get started? As you can see, I was working on my swatch and I came across a pesky little knot in my work. So I wanna eliminate that, I don't want that in my work. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to unknit or tink back just to get this so that I only have one needle that I have to contend with. Okay, and for this technique, you're going to need a pair of scissors and a very fine tooth comb. And I actually only use this comb for this technique. I keep this in my knitting notion bag just for this purpose. And then also you can either use cold water, very, very, very uh, cold water, or very, very hot water. You just want an extreme temperature change. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this knot. So I'll cut it on both sides. And of course at this point, if you've just ran out of your, your ball of yarn that you're working on, you don't need to cut anything. You're just gonna pull out your brand new yarn that you're working with or your brand new skein and you won't need to cut anything. Okay, so as you can see, I've got two rough ends here. And you may find with this technique, as with these two here, probably at the uh, factory where they spun this yarn, they happen to attach a very thin part of this yarn to a very thick part. So if you want, you can even locate a thicker portion, which we have about here. If you don't, if you aren't worrying about um, your yardage. Okay, so now we have two pieces of wool that are a little more even in thickness. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is where our fine tooth comb comes in. What I like to do is just place these two strands together and I usually hold them about an inch down and you're simply going to comb these two strands with your comb. I'm gonna rotate my work here so you can see what I'm doing. Usually what I do is try to grab one of these little teeth and make sure it goes in between my yarn. Might take a little coaxing. And sometimes just like when you're pulling out rats from your hair, you might wanna start at the very end of the strand and you'll work your way in. As you can see, this one's got a pesky little knot. But basically we're just separating the little twist that's already in this um, yarn. Sometimes if you're using a yarn that's plied, you're just separating the plies out. Okay, there we go, we got that knot finally. Okay, so I'm combing this out. I'm taking out that twist. Sometimes you need to untwist your yarn and comb it again. And now I'll grab my other strand of yarn and do the same thing. This yarn that I'm using is Malabrigio Worsted, and it's actually has almost a felted um, quality to it. So I think this is a little more difficult to comb out. Some of your home uh, homespuns aren't aren't always as felted as this one. Okay, so as you can see, we've got these little cotton candy ends. 
We're just roughing up that fiber, trying to get it back to its original state, basically, where it's not tightly spun. And as I said, we're just taking the last, oh, not even an inch. So we're just going to comb that out, get nice and fuzzy. And really, we haven't lost, if you take a look here, we haven't lost a lot of fiber. So we're not taking too much of the integrity away from the yarn. You can see it's just a little amount there that we've taken away. Okay, so basically, we've roughed up both edges of our working yarn and our new yarn. And we're simply going to rotate these towards each other. And we're going to place one on top of the other, doesn't matter which, so that they both meet in that one inch area that we combed out. Okay, and once you've done that, you want to hold these together. And this is where our either ice water or hot water comes into play. You're just going to dip your finger in there. Smush these fibers together, and now we're just going to roll. And then I like to just take two fingers usually and start rubbing together. I'm shaking my table here. So basically we are felting our fiber, felting our wool. And I usually do this until I feel all the water has evaporated from the fiber as well as my fingers. So I'll stop. And if you take a look, it's looking a little rough at this point. Try to get it in the white part of the camera. There we go. So you can see I'm felting those two strands together. And if you look to the right and the left of where I'm felting, it looks pretty gnarly. <laughs> so usually I'll take a little bit more of my water, touch over there, give it a nice little spin between my fingers. Do the same on the left side here, just to kind of even out our gauge of our yarn. But I'm gonna locate that rough part where I just felted those two ends together, just to ensure that these are not gonna come apart later. Okay, and if you notice, we have a slight twist in this Malabrigio yarn. And you will have a definite twist in your um, plied yarns. So what I normally do at this point, if I feel like I'm done felting the two strands, I just locate that twist and I give it an extreme twist. And what I mean by that is just grab on either side of where you felted your ends together and kind of like you're closing or opening a piece of candy, the wrapper, you want to twist towards you with your right hand and away from you with the left. And this is where that extreme twist comes in. It's going to start to fold in on itself, as you can see here. I just continue with that twist until it starts twisting on itself. And then it'll, of course, just as when you're creating a skein, it wants to twist the opposite direction. And I just go with it. We're essentially creating or spinning a yarn out of the one inch section. So I'm going to pull it apart now. And as you can see, it's got that natural twist in it. And just as we have with this Malabrigio yarn, it's, it's almost like a thick and thin. It goes from thick pieces to thinner. That's all we've created in our work here. It's gone from thick to slightly thinner and then back to thick. So you're not going to notice a huge difference in your gauge as you're knitting because this is, as I said, just a one inch section of our work. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up my work here and I just want to knit across the row so you guys can see or not see where I made that join. Okay, so I'm to that point right now. And sometimes when I I notice that I'm going to have to do this technique. 
I try and do it in a less noticeable part of my pattern. If you have lace work and whatnot, you probably don't want to put that join where your lace is going to be the most prominent. But if you turn here, you can see those are the stitches that I felted. And of course you can't tell yet what those are going to look like. But as I said, you just want to make sure probably that you place these in an area of your design where it's going to be a little less noticeable. Like yarn overs would be a good place or stitches that are going to be covered up by decreases. But that is how we create a felted join or a spit join. So I hope this technique helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching.